So you want as much glamour as you can get your hands on, but you don't want to pay the earth to get it. Well, you're exactly the person for whom the BMW 2 Series Coupe is for. Traditionally, this has been a car that provides the same desirable badge as the bigger 4 Series Coupe, plus a similar level of slinky styling, interior quality, and polished driving dynamics, but all for quite a bit less cash. Now there's an all new version of the BMW 2 Series, and spoiler alert, it fulfills that brief better than ever before. And we're going to tell you why in this video. But before we do that, please make sure you like and subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel and click on that bell icon so that you catch all of our latest videos. Much of a BMW's glamour should come from the way it looks. And the easiest way to illustrate that is to show you the profile. So we've got long front end, short rear end, and a low slung sweeping roof line. Tried and tested formula works every time. There's plenty to like in the details too, with these small pointy headlights, triangular air intakes, and a power dome in the bonnet. It's interesting that with this car, BMW has resisted the temptation to use the huge gaping kidney grills that have found their way onto most other modern BMWs. Depending on your outlook, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. The squat back end is pretty handsome too, although we have heard some rather uncharitable folk on Twitter saying that it looks a bit like the face of a three-toed sloth. Hairy mammal or no hairy mammal, the back of the car hides a boot that's actually a pretty decent size for the small coupe class. At 390 litres, it's actually bigger than the space you'd get in a Volkswagen Golf, which is impressive for a coupe, although the saloon-style boot opening means the space isn't as easy to get at. But you can fold the rear seats down for more space, and they even lie impressively flat. Who says coupes aren't practical? Well, anyone who tries to sit in the back, that's who. Curling yourself between the front seat and the edge of the door opening and into the rear seats takes some contortionism. Once you're there, legroom is actually surprisingly generous, but headroom is in pretty short supply. I'm only five foot four and a half, and I've got just enough legroom, but when it comes to headroom, even I'm struggling. So if you're taller than me, you're going to find it probably a little bit too squishy back here. Climb into the front seats, and if you've ever been near 3 Series or 4 Series, you'll notice lots of familiarity. That's because the cabin of the 2 Series is virtually identical, with the exception of some redesigned door cards. That's a very good thing, and for a variety of reasons. The quality in here feels absolutely top-notch. You are surrounded by high-class materials and attractive fixtures and fittings. In fact, there isn't a single panel here that feels out of place. It's a very sophisticated place to spend time. It also means you get one of the best infotainment systems in the business. Okay, it's not BMW's absolute latest system, which is found in models such as the i4 and iX, but if anything, this one is even easier to use because you have a central dial controller for scrolling through the logically arranged menus, rather than having to rely solely on touchscreen functionality. It also looks bang up to date with sharp graphics, slick screen transitions, and quick responses. You'll also have an impressive amount of comfort up here. The seats are great and fully electrically adjustable across the whole range as standard. And the driving position is sporty, low slung, and just gets you in the mood for some fun. Talking of which. Remember we said the interior was virtually identical to the 4 Series? Well, it's not just that that it shares with the 4 Series, it also shares a lot of the same underpinnings. Traditionally, the 2 Series sat on the smaller 1 Series platform, but that is now front-wheel drive, and BMW wanted to maintain the sporty rear-wheel drive character of the 2 Series, so it's been given rear mechanicals of the bigger, more sophisticated, more expensive car. There are three versions available. The 220i has a 2-litre petrol engine with 184 horsepower, and the 220d has a 2-litre diesel with 190 horsepower. The car we've got here, however, is the range-topping M240i, which gets a 3-litre, six-cylinder petrol engine with a stonking 374 horsepower. All cars come with an 8-speed automatic gearbox, and where the M240i differs, apart from the extra power, of course, is that in most normal circumstances, drive is sent to the rear wheels. And if any slip is detected, a little bit can go to the front, making it a very rear biased four-wheel drive car. That contributes to some really entertaining handling characteristics. It has the playful, adjustable nature of a rear-wheel drive car combined with the added grip and traction of all-wheel drive. 
and the even weight distribution also helps the car feel more balanced and poised when hairing around corners. The fast responses of the steering help make the car feel even more pointy and agile, and there's a reassuring weight and decent feedback to be felt through the wheel. It's worth noting that the car we're driving today is fitted with £500 worth of optional adaptive suspension and it's only available on the 240i. We're yet to drive a standard car to discover its character. That said, we'd say for £500, it is a very worthy addition. Select the comfort mode, and although there's still the hint of firmness you expect in such a sporty car, the suspension becomes supple enough to take the sting out of most bumps and ruts, and to plough along a motorway for hours on end. This is an impressively comfortable way to drive. And on those occasions where comfort is less important than outright thrills, you just simply select sport mode. That firms up the suspension, controls body roll, and really just helps you to feel very connected with the road. And that kind of split personality is really appealing. And what about that engine? Well, listen to this. Sounds pretty brutal, right? So is the acceleration. 0 to 62 takes just 4.3 seconds. And when you're already on the move, pickup is impressive. This is one very fast, one very exciting car. I would call this a me car. In pretty much every area we've talked about, the 2 Series Coupe does an exceptional job, specifically the M240i that we have here. It's not perfect though, there are some equipment items that we'd really like to see as standard for the price that it is. The M240i starts at £46,000 and the standard version starts at £35,000, so that price is quite high. Even so, the 2 Series is an impressive all-rounder, offering a range of abilities that not really any other the rival can replicate. We'd love to hear what you think about the 2 Series Coupe, so please let us know in the comments and remember to subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel for lots more car reviews and other videos. And if you're looking for your next car, head over to cargurus.co.uk where you can not only find it, but we'll also tell you whether or not you're getting a good deal.